all of the all of my information for my character in one place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. No one's gonna take Aki from so, theater. You just see like a shepherd's crook just comes out sideways and grabs Aki and pulls him off like well. And runs. See, Peter is hugging her. Hug Aki is close to her chest all the way. Like he's uh, like, Let go of me. Hell. I don't think anyone's gonna try. Can't breathe. So, I don't think anyone's gonna try. They're looking for the Garden of Earthly Delights. It's so it seems to be a menagerie. Mm, he nods. A mass escape seems like an apt solution to our problem then. <laughs> and Ross smiles. You mean open all the cages, let the beasts roam the city? It does seem like something I would enjoy. Mm. Depends on how dangerous the beasts you keep are. Yes, I assume his big door can keep most of them in. He nods, yes, perhaps. If you Although, just, uh, maybe more of them are intelligent, as the dragons would be. Since I don't really like the idea of leaving them in there. If you invest so heavily into a, uh, such a fancy door, then one would hope that it would actually be able to keep your goods inside, I suppose. But how well defend against someone releasing it? We'll find out. Indeed. Most cages are very easy to open from the outside if you get the opportunity. Perhaps that will be the problem. We don't, at least I don't really have the monetary worth of being able to enter this place. Looks through. Talifer looks through the coin pouch. Though, I have, though I, I have come into the possession of more money recently, not enough to probably get in. It depends. Uh, do he does he have an entrance fee into his garden, or is it just a? Uh, well, I mean, would you actually charge a patron from browsing your wares? Little shrugs, perhaps. I suppose. Depends on how high class he wants the establishment to be. Yes, I suppose so. If he is catering only to the uh, filthy rich, so to speak. Maybe well, who could afford a dragon? Those those have ludicrously large amounts of money. There are far better things you can do with with money than just have it lying around. Perhaps that is our luck then. If he only allows the filthy rich inside, then once inside there should be little security as well. If he was in there with them, they would be under constant watch. Hopefully we won't have the same problem. Possibly watching the entrances, but other than that, maybe yes, not too much inside. Uh, on the map, which way do you want to take? The road um, you told us? I'm in the main road. Where are we? Where are we, by the way? You are currently here, at this junction. I could take mean, this road up. Right? Reasonably, we could go this way. Mm -hmm. Seems likely to me. Sure, you go this way. People said in the main road, so we could uh, see the big door. It seems like and a rather we... large thing. Don't really know what we're going to do when we find the big door, but, uh, you know. You head through the gate, indeed, into the inner city, but you don't really find any big door, and at the next gate, there are a bunch of guards not letting you enter. Oh, as really? You would be, as you would be leaving the inner city and heading into a whole other district. And from their expressions, it's quite clear that they don't want random people wandering in there. Well, um, Sirs, could you point us in the way to the Garden of uh, Unearthly Delights? One of them frowns. We heard Out there's the a gate. magnificent door to see. Out the gate, right, then in the gate. The inner city is that way. This is the way to the gate, dis to the palace district. There are no visitors allowed. Oh, very well then. Thank you. I suppose we'll follow those directions. Mm -hmm. You find a second gate to the inner city oh, in this cool. confusing city. I mean, we've wheeled some more. What is that up. thing? That is a large sphinx. It is absolutely enormous looking over the city and made out of sandstone. Hmm. It looks far older than any of the buildings in this entire city. I wonder if there's something interesting under that thing. 
A sparkle in his eye. <laughs> He's uh, raising his pickaxe. And eventually, as you walk along this road, you do see a rather fancy door on the left side of this building over here, squeezed between two other merchant shops. It is a depiction of many different animals, from unicorns to imperial dragons to all kinds of creatures that might not even exist. And in front of it stand two guards, each of them wielding a spear, the spear tip formed like a snake for one of the guards, and the horn of a rhinoceros for the other one. Rather fancy. Probably not that useful in combat, but they are certainly very pretty, as they bar your entrance. If anyone wanted dinosaurs, it's probably the place to go. Mm -hmm. Sure, I mean, I don't think we're going to go all the way up to them. Well, I mean, they can buy the door. What's the uh, what's the shops on the either side? Uh, they are nothing really fancy. The left seems to be a rather expensive clover shop with lots of different kinds of fancy and bright cloth, mm -hmm. and the other side sells leather. Can we, uh, as we pass by, can we like go around and take a look at the back of these buildings? You certainly can. Then we do so. You try to go around the back, but the road doesn't immediately go around the buildings. There is an alleyway that you can take, but going in there you do see that the entire area is completely packed with houses. Mm -hmm. The back of the shops might not even have any access whatsoever and are likely just the back walls of the other houses. So they're basically wall and wall? Yes. Mm. Does it seem to be like a big place, like an actual garden? Uh, it's very hard to tell how large... This is like a large... tiny thing that goes to underground or something? It's very hard to tell how large it actually is. You do see that it very likely has a second floor, but the actual size of the building itself is impossible to assess from the outside. All it has is a large double door made from some fancy wood. Because my initial thought was like, oh, well, if there's a back, back way, we can just dig our way in from there. Uh -huh. else. Just fly over, but yeah, if fly it's just over. a big kind of box building, not well, much of a garden. Could try to try the front door to begin with. So what? trying front to door. so basically there are, there are one there are two buildings they're kind of packed together. Between those buildings are huge double doors. Behind the double doors we see a building, or I mean I'm trying to like visualize if. Could we fly over the double doors and like get in that way? Or uh, the double doors are the entranceway to the building. It's not a gate. Yeah, it's like just a big office building, basically. I imagine okay. big, big square. Yeah, apart from the door, thing. it looks very ordinary. The building, but the quality of the guards' weapons and the door itself do speak a whole other language. Bruce yeah, can take a quick look from the sky. It takes like five minutes. Might as well fly up and take a look. Just take flight and, and take a look from there. You fly up and you see a pretty square sandstone building, which does indeed have a second floor, but no windows at all. But no, nothing open to the roof and no, no actual nothing garden. Open. Not having any windows is not entirely uncommon in the city. It appears from looking from the from the outside. Probably because the air is either incredibly humid or hot, so having a window would not, would not do anything in great. Indoor control. Oh. I'm going to land down and say, basically tell the others what's what the he saw. What's the building made of? It seems to be sandstone, as most buildings in the city are. Even the ceiling? The it's ceiling is a similar flat. material. Or... Of course, it might just be a coating of sandstone, so you can't just see immediately what the entire building is made is out of. Is it domed or, or flat? It is flat. Flat, all right. You could land on it, I guess. I could. Probably not something they would like, but... No. I mean, was there a guard on, on the... On the like, we, like, probably you can hear it. Mm, you can hear uh, it. Flat. <laughs> <laughs> there does not seem to be a guard on the roof, as you're clearly not supposed to walk on the roof. Mm -hmm. Find, find a few uh, pickaxes, dig down from the roof. 
don't think this is inconspicuous. Cast cast silence. The arcane is cast silence, and then we can dig down. I suppose we could just try walking in. See, like we seem like we own the place. Hmm. Te te technically, worst case scenario, we stone shape the roof open. Yeah. Do you have a stone shape? I, I guess scroll of stone shape. Sure. He says, "Well, that's a, that's a very nice roof you have there." And then you just cast that and open it up. I mean, that, you know, you know, that's what that's last. You know, that's our last scenario we do. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, why, why last? I like it. <laughs> it's a good scenario. We don't know what's going to be on the other side yet. That's true. We might open it up to like the Manticore pit or something. Perhaps yes. we can actually get a tour. Maybe. That would be great. I'd like to see what's inside. And then, and then we could choose where to make the hole. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to try to talk to the guards then? I suppose we could. I mean, we're here to basically break out some prisoners, but there's no need no, to no, be uncivilized. No, no, we're, we're, here, we're, here, we're here to browse his wares. I said, there's no need to be uncivilized. Ruthen says, uh, would you like me to speak, or... Is that a grins? Elidor looks at him, nods, and says, you seem to have a way with words. I think this is alright, then, as he walks to, towards the guards. Uh, as he does, Elidor will activate his armor, making it uh, look still like, like he's wearing a plate, but removing the Saren Ray um, uh, decorations on it. Okay. And as you come back to the building entrance from your little exploration tour, you do see that the guards are currently arguing with a rather old-looking man with a long white beard and a rather fancy green hat as the man tells him, <laughs> What do you mean you need my invitation? I gave that to you the other day. Don't you have it? I don't have it. You must have it. The guards look at each other, frowning. Look back at the at the old man. No invitation, no entry, sir. The man frowns, stops his tirade for a moment. Do you know who I am? Look at this hat. The guards nod. Do you know who I am, I asked. Yes, yes we do. Well then, let me in. I intend to purchase my wares. The guards look at each other. Look at, look back at the at the old man. No invitation, no entry. Rules are rules. The the old man seems to want to continue arguing, but then just frowns incredibly hard and stumps away. I, as he as he mumbles, I know I had that damn slip of paper somewhere. Well, oh. he'll if, find if a might. big red bird hopping after him. <laughs> if, <you might>. <laughs> <laughs> if he's going too fast, probably taking flight and then landing next to him. The thud. He turns around. Ruth Ruthran Skycomer, finder of invitations extraordinaire. He raises an eyebrow. I couldn't help but to overhear your conversation with the with dear uh, guards over there, and uh, it just happens that I've lost my invitation as well. He winks. Have you now? What does that concern me exactly? Well, it seems like we're in the same kind of trouble, and I thought perhaps we could find a solution together. It seems like you're not getting in without one, and since you seem to have misplaced it, or they do. This is, uh, perhaps there is some way in which we could help each other. Talithel's going to, you know, catch up behind you. He, he looks you up and down. And but it why would I like want I would to be get seen this... with you? This is, he sort of, uh, says, you want to get inside the menagerie? Well, look at this one. He sort of pats him. He's a large red bird. Looks at the bird. I have no interest in birds. Besides, do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I... Who is he? You could make a knowledge local check to try to identify him. Sure. Ruth, well, I, did send you, I did send you questions before she... But you're well. Did you? Yes. Elidor Ruth, could I buy things? Elidor would also walk up. Uh, of course I know who you are. <laughs> Bluff roll. <laughs> but yes, do I know who he is? You have no idea. <laughs> He's no one important. Well, of course I know who he is. Of course you do. You see here. You can roll a bluff check if you want. Obviously I know who he is. 
<laughs> However, <laughs> these, my uh, compatriots, don't. Would you mind introducing yourself to them? As I said, I wouldn't rob you of the opportunity. He frowns at you. Well, I am Yamata, the great, greatest wizard of Katabesh and beyond. I am the best scholar you will ever meet, and I intend to get what I want. The best scholar you'll ever meet? Yes. What is it you want? He looks at you again. Well, I do need an... He frowns, sighs. <laughs> Companion. I, it is oh. so lonely at times. I figured something exotic would make me happy. I, I have heard that Fatima sells the most exotic of all things, and he has indeed heard of me, as so many people have before, <laughs> and has decided to invite me to his place. I thought it would be a great opportunity to, well, see what he has to offer, but now I'm being rejected by his guards. If you, if I you know I had that paper, slip of paper somewhere on me. I must have lost it on the way. Do you remember what the slip of paper looks like? You know, um... Tittle will... the great wizard just recreated? <clears throat> Or is it magical in nature? It's a slip of paper with text on it. Quite fancy paper, too. That... I... Yeah. Well, Tim, well, out and I can help you track it if you... <laughs> the paper has left tracks. No, smell. Tiro has scent. I mean, you're, you're in a I city... I like... he actually has a paper paper. Probably not. Yes, um... There is, there is always, there is always one thing. Of course, you know, you, you clearly should be able to get in there. As you said, you've had an invitation before. And those, you know, yes, those, I did. Those, those, those guards, of course, would be causing, causing you issue. How would you, how would you feel, how, how would you feel about a, um, you know, because Agile's probably clearly supposed to get in there, just, re, just recreating the invitation. That would be fraud. What are you suggesting? I'm, I'm not. It's not, it's not fraud. You're rightfully supposed to get in there, aren't you? I. Are you, are you saying you weren't? Well, I was, and I do have the abilities of doing such a mundane trick, of course, but I don't quite remember how it looked like. It would be... Oh. I know that it said I was invited to the Garden of Unearthly Light. Quite the ridiculous name, by the way. And, well, now the paper's just gone. Well, as you said, then, you're, you cl you cl you cl you cl as you were clearly the best scholar, and you clearly know all the things... You clearly have all the skills you're required. I'm sure you'll be able to find a way. Tiro just standing behind the group eating something. It goes, it still sounds like a garden of chocolate. <laughs> Elodor is, is looking at this wizard with his drow eyes. Just considering him. <laughs> he, he, suddenly, he suddenly seems deep in thought as he's thinking about something. Where have I been when I left my, my room? I was right here. Oh, it was quite crowded, and oh, perhaps a pickpocket I... grabbed it. He looks at you suddenly with big eyes. Yes, <laughs> that 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 figure. I I thought he was just rude bumping into me like that. But you're new oh. in this city, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I, I, I've. Arrived rather recently, mm, yeah, so, uh, and yet I am the greatest scholar in all of Canada. Of course, I can of tell course. you that much. Mm. Elador is it looks suitably impressed. Well, what did the person look like? If he has it, there must be a way to get it back. A, a light blue robe. That is hard to. Well, it, quite difficult to describe a person who clearly doesn't want to be described, isn't it? A blue robe. That is all I re remember. A hood. It's, 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 it's not the same person. It's not the same person with the blue hat who unloaded the doctor. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, what else did he take? The, the old man pats around his pockets. And suddenly gets big eyes. My purse! <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it, well, I hope you at least didn't have a, too much in it. He had like astral diamonds in it to pay for the damn dragons. Oh. Mm. He looks rather defeated at this point as Aww. he sits down on the sandy, sandy floor. Aww. You know, all I wanted was someone to keep me company during my studies. 
Well, if you know, if you know if you know the item, it's not a very difficult spell to use. Spe- spell a, lo- a locate object spell, and clearly a wizard of your caliber would quite easily to pull that off. He stares at you. Are you suggesting that I can't? No, I'm just I'm just giving you a suggestion. That's all. Well, if you think I can do it, then you should do it. Well, it's your it's your purse. You need to clearly visualize it. It's how the spell works. You'd know that if you're a powerful wizard. Oh, no, don't antagonize the ill God wizard. Great. You know, Tiro's is bringing out snacks. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Elidor is just sighing, <laughs> looking at this mess. If, if anyone is uh, is next to Tiris, you'll offer some snacks. Uh, I'll take some snacks. Sure. It's like Maybe. dried apples. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, do you understand? I cannot, I cannot visualize your coin purse for you. You're the one who knows how it looks. Are you suggesting I'm a fraud, Mister? I'm just, I'm just, po- I'm just pointing out the most rudimentary part of of magic. And I should point out that you should leave. You know, that is fine. I, is I use my my performance instead of my sense motive. Does he seem to be a fraud? <laughs> yes. Yes. He, he seems to look the part, but not quite know what he's doing. You know, Tito feels sorry for this. Well, sort of moves a little closer. You know, you may have been robbed, but you at least you have a nice hat. So I as well happened to have my purse stolen from me with my uh, my invitation in it. However, it would be rather easy to find it, I think, if we just knew what it looked like. Uh, it's just a square piece of paper on some papyrus, I think. Some yellowish paper with some fancy writing. Red and blue, I do believe. Have you seen anyone else's except your own? No, of course not. They might be unique. Shrugs. Well, there are other shops that sell animals in this town. Probably not as extravagant as Fatima's place, but it'll do. I would settle for a parakeet at this point. Looks tacky. Well, Horace if, is on the ship. Or Socrates, sorry. If Socrates. someone was to get in there with each other's help, perhaps um, a discount price would be viable for all of the creatures in there. If it could be carried out. What do you hey! mean? Hey! Why is Nairo on this map? Because Helen <gasps> was online earlier. He's right there. Oh. <laughs> you found the first Nairo of Dragon's Cry! There you go. Hey. I've been held him here. So you do not trust Haldemir around, he, he makes the mess everywhere. The, the old man looks at you. Why do you want to go in that place so urgently, almost, it seems? <laughs> uh, we, too, are looking for companionship. Yeah, well, I need an exotic animal, too. Says, I only have these four. They might be unique by themselves, but they don't quite do what I need. Is he motioning Elidor, to us? Elidor yeah. nods and says, I am terrible at parties. Tito t- t- looks really sad at the... Uh... <laughs> well, I forgot your, your gnome's name, it's so long. With the hand. Oh, yeah. Tito looks at I'm so sorry, Master. I really tried to please, but it's just so tough. <laughs> I'm people, so sorry, uh, Master. People draw blades and children scream when I approach. I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> France. Next to the wizard says, "You see, my collection is wholly." Uh, uh, says, "I'm just a beginner. And I'll get there soon enough. I'll have I'm them not all." Not as soft as I used to. I know, master. <laughs> You've grown old. He, he, he frowns at you, looking at at each of you again appraisingly. Ruth and would look very suave. Well, if if you want to have something that is easier to maintain, there's always the menagerie at the dockside. It sells fish, I do believe. <laughs> so this, uh, are you implying, are you implying like that our master cannot take care uh, of things? <laughs> into scales. Ugh. He needs something softer than me to take his place in the bed. Oh my. It looks back to <laughs> Terry kind of confused. <laughs> 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 As she said, yeah, menagerie is surely the right place for such a 
thing. <laughs> well, this one must be. He massages his, his lower chin. Exactly oh. like that. If you want something soft, uh, have you tried a camel? Uh, he sort of looks at the man and says, uh, yeah, sadly. You know, the, uh, the, like, the, uh, the spittle took hours to uh, to remove from the ceiling, sadly. Sirius ears really peek at that. She's like, I'm softer than a camel. Mine and the camels. Nods. Was it? Just, uh, <laughs> regardless, you had your answer. Um, now about getting in there. Well, how do you expect me to help? I can't even get in there myself. And frankly, I don't care anymore. Well, just in case, maybe you can at least um, uh, help us retrace your steps. Frowns at you. You want to follow me to my room. <laughs> Very well, then, if you wish. I'm completely committed to follow this guy. It is decided, then. We shall follow you to your room. Eleanor nods, great idea. As Master says. Looks at each of you in turn, questioning. I am going to call the guards if you do. <laughs> I am a buyer in the city. I have rights. I have been so robbed we. once. Done nothing wrong. You are not people I want to be seen with anymore, I think. She slowly backs away. Solve your own problems. I have plenty of my own. I make I make I make the sound of a lion from behind him. <laughs> he bolts the other direction past you. Do do you give chase? Uh I don't really see the point. Mm, then didn't really want to hunt a man. I mean, he would like to, but <coughs> you seem kind of mean. Yeah, I'm softer than a camel. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Well, there's a, they are rather hard, most of them at least. Jiru offers her tail you can touch. The nerve of that man calling himself the best scholar you'll ever meet. He doesn't even, know the, doesn't even know the fundamentals of magic. I didn't really know who he was. He'd, he is no one important in this city. If, if, he wa if he was, I would have found, about, found out about him in one of my 14 different travels through this area. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the most important man in the city, simply having some fun posing as, uh, well, someone not important. Is the editor going to touch Chiru's tail? Did we lose Jonas? Again? No. We lost him to the Elks. No, I'm here. Is he gonna take up in the offer to touch Tiro's tail? I mean, he, he has like a mailed glove on. He won't really feel much. You know, he, she'll poke your face with her tail. It's really soft. He will, uh... <laughs> he will... Like, a, like, a, like a chinchilla, that's how soft. Oh. Gee, gee, yeah. Would make good boots. Yeah. <laughs> she, ta <laughs> she takes care of it, clearly. Well, yeah, of course. It's the pride and joy, like that's her. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. Uh, he will, again. He will look suitably impressed. At her softness, or yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very soft. Yes, yes, yes. quite. I, uh, she is quite more uh, soft than a camel. Well, it's quite yes. Uh, I've never seen nor touched a camel, but uh, I will I take it. Uh, take it old fast. Take it for me. He nods, I could imagine. I must say, Tira, that is, in that is in your tail is incredibly soft. <laughs> Eleanor frowns, can we... I'm, 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 I must I will, I have to ask you how, you'd, how you do that later. I have some friends back at my old academy that would love to know for their animals. Hmm. Back away from this. Volcanic, volcanic so ash. ash. I wonder if the baby dragons are crying right now. <laughs> oh, Eladon. yes, yes, important. Yes, it's important. Eleanor okay. nods, yes. Uh... <laughs> But Church Iraq okay. seems very stern. Mm. Mm. That's all he does. The bird? What? Church Iraqs. <laughs> Who the hell is that? 
It's our companion. The person oh. you've known for weeks now. <laughs> yeah. Is that well, the never... bird? He's yeah, quiet, he's... but that's yeah. because he's shy. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's the, he's the silent. At least that's type. what Ruth Randall told all of you if you're. Uh, <laughs> if you've... <laughs> anyway, okay, let's find a way. He gave a vow of silence. Oh, I see. That's uh, that's quite uh, that's quite uh, serious. He often breaks it though. No. Don't 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 talk to him about it. It's a sore spot. Oh sure, I can imagine. But the volcanic ash makes your fur really really soft. Sure. I guess the streets are very crowded though. Yes. With uh, make sure that uh, that Siron uh, has his sort of wings spread a little bit so that nobody can sort of bump into him specifically. Yes, I, I, I'm, ta I'm taking consideration. I should the local the local dialect of the area. It, if only we could, if only we could get a sample of his writing, then we could just get a letter and walk straight in. Yes, I'm not sure it's going to be that simple. If it's well, uh, such an exclusive establishment, they most likely have seals or other s met methods of uh, assuring the authenticity of the document. I doubt any. You, you, have, you have never seen me with an ink pen. He shrugs. I suppose not, but. Besides, we need a fully functional piece of paper already. Do you know what the seal looks like? His his, his seal, it, it depending on depending on how well known he is in the area. Looks around. It it it, it may it may be it may be simple. It may not. Perhaps should is it any idea to look for that missing invitation? Was he lying about that too? I got the sense that he was lying about that very much. Yes. Yes. I, I, you, you, I, I think it was quite clear that I was calling all his frauds. Then the question remains: is to, of course, how does? Oh one... no! Tiru touches herself and she lost something. You do seem to be missing something. Ah! Oh no! <laughs> Someone on here to me. I lost something for me. What, what has she lost? lost? Well, where's you, the guy? Do He's do you check your your pockets? Yeah, he went that way. Then oh, follow him. Let's go. She followed him to the sky. I would like Tiro to roll me a perception or survival check. Perception would be more appropriate. Uh, survival is tracking them, I believe it. Let me see. What you just see the guy before you can track him or uh, my something. Seventeen percent. Perception is fourteen. I would prefer survival, though. Survival. You think that trying to track the person via his footprints might be far more difficult than simply looking where he's going. Okay, let's uh, hope for oh, the best. Okay. Well, that's not bad. You spot the figure that you think bumped into you, and you could follow him if you so desired. Yeah, she's gonna follow him. Uh, she's gonna ask uh, Aki to stay up from the sky and keep an eye on him. Uh, Aki will do just that as you bolt after the figure. Is he pointed out to us? Yeah, it's Tiro points him out. Well, Rutherham will light into the fly into the sky as well. Talafel will rush rush through the crowd. See, many almost sometimes blinking, like rush from one location to another in the crowd. What did he take? He took ten gold pieces. <gasps> You will die for this sin. This is really Sell him into slavery. Tangles. Smite evil. And then let's As go. you chase really? after the... <laughs> Six thousand. <laughs> as you chase after the blue robe figure dodging through the crowd, and as said figure sees itself getting chased through the air, bolts into an alley. It will be very difficult to track him from the air, as there are roofs and overhangs. Well, Tiru will follow. Yeah, I'm Only a land. dexterity check, please, Tiro. I'm also following by land, technically, so... With rain, cannot you... really keep up with the others on land. As you quickly try to dodge through the crowd, Ooh, and you that's... indeed manage to weave through the people just as... as adequately as the person you're chasing is, you bolt past... you bolt after him into the alley, as you see a vase flying towards your face, a reflex safe. That is so a face rude. vase. <laughs> you know, this is the correct person if anyone's going to have a vase for it. I hope. Yeah. 
you dodge it no problem. And you just see, give it back, you know? And see the figure turn a left in the next fork in the road. Oh, I am so going to be sold. I'm following you. Out. I'm following you. Yes. Do you, hmm. do you follow the figure? Tiro is definitely in the lead at this point, at least a couple of seconds. I should be able to keep up with her from the air, but... Well, oh, you can't really see where she's going in the alley currently. If it helps me catch up sheep, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be using my, uh, I'll be using my dimensional step to basically teleport again to catch up ground. Okay, you can be just, just barely behind Tiro. So I'll, I'll mark a point of my reservoir for using that. No one steals ten gold from Tiro. <laughs> but basically, while Tiro is like sprinting, like and I fall behind, it's just like so I just teleport next to Tiro and just like, hey, hey. If there's anything in the way, can't you just like run up the buildings almost? She she basically could. She, she has a run speed up against building. Yeah. You can certainly run along a building if that's if that feels appropriate, and eventually you do see that the person you're chasing has simply stopped. As, as. The creature is looking at you, smiling. I will put us somewhere. Still in the alleyway? Still in the alleyway, yes. He's cornered. As he's what is the place with all his friends. As what is looking back at Tiro. Oh! Is a, a, a rather, fam well, not familiar figure, but it is certainly a cat folk, smiling viciously at, at Tiro, almost... almost Satisfied, as she says, "You are as fast as you look. I'm impressed." Well, of course. Well, Gerder. Now the, yeah, the others know. eventually arrive too. Well, you know, I was like teleporting. I'm pretty probably pretty close. Now give me back my coin. Probably in the back. She she smiles again, showing her rather long teeth. Hop. Throws you throws you Hop. a. Rather familiar pouch. Zero catches it. And in it are eight gold pieces. Eight? Oh, it's fine. She can have two. Zero looks at us. So, any further reason why you brought me here? I was curious. I can hardly just walk up to you and talk to you. Your friends look rather vicious. And in fact, I would like them to stay away for at least a little bit. I'm just interested in a little talk, maybe. It is rare to see one of our kind here in Katapesh. At least three ones. She looks sad. What brings you here, then, to this forsaken city? I, you know... <laughs> adventure, I guess. The search for adrenaline, I see. Ah, this city certainly has some of that to offer. It is rare to see a city where murderers are having, are getting less harsh punishments than thieves. Makes the job ever so much more exciting. Mm, I suppose. I've seen the lot of you circle the... Garden of Unearthly Delights for quite a while now. You're yeah. up to something. I would like to, to, to get some chocolate from there. <laughs> she blinks. There are easier places to get chocolate, my friend. Yeah, but they're not called that name. Uh, <laughs> she looks utterly confused at this point. <laughs> Talitha will look over just but look curiously at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a she, by the way. She? Why is it so tough to get in there? Is it really that... big, you know... taboo place? Oh, hardly. It's just very expensive. The merchant who owns it does not wish to waste his time. How do you get in, then? Oh, with a slip of paper, I do believe. Yeah, I, I heard. You wouldn't happen to have one, would you? Why, in fact, I do. I've just acquired it quite rather recently. Oh, did he have this very nice hat? He did. Oh. I contemplated steam there too, but that would have been too difficult even for me. 
Well, he was really rude, so you know, he had it coming. Now, this slip of paper, I do not have it on me, of course. It is rather valuable, yes? Of course. And you want it. I sure do. I would like some chocolate. You are not as bright as you look, I have to say. <laughs> and Lerdon nods silently behind, <laughs> behind her back. <laughs> you know, it's better she thinks that way. Why then? Uh, I hello. have something valuable. You have valuables. I see a trait in our future. <laughs> cool. You see her waiting expectantly. She looks confused. What are you expecting of me? This is usually the point where we haggle about the prices. You tell me a number that is way too low, I tell you a number that is way too high. And eventually, I get what I want. Eladar uh, sighs and says, can we just skip the grandstanding and just name the price? 2,000 gold pieces. Tiller looks at the group, anyone good at the praise? It's not really a praise thing here, but... It's certainly not... a princely sum for a piece of it's paper. It's not something we can buy, so... Then what, a bluff? Looks, uh, looks at the... Uh, and how do we know you actually have this piece of paper and not just going to take the money and run? Which oh, you've I already guess... showed you're pretty good at. I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. And you did throw a, a, a vase in my face. She smiles. You dodged it rather expertly. I say this is simply an excellent survival technique. If we capture this thief as it was, bring it to the authorities, perhaps there will be some sort of reward for it. Rewards from the authorities. You are new in this city, are you not? Uh, well, I did not have to put you in as a criminal. I'm sure one of your kind is very rare in these parts. Forgive as you say, free. Reference. You forget, you, forget, you forget about the slave labor fee. Her expression changes to something rather somber, thoughtful as she looks at you with something like barely, barely suppressed fury. I see you are that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of people after all. I figured someone of my kind would hang around with more reasonable people. The thing happens to be, we don't have 2,000 gold pieces. And I would rather not spend what little we do have on, uh, well, uh, someone taking it away from us. Elidor crosses his arms. I do not suppose there is a way for us to lower this price. Maybe there's something else you might want. Now you're getting the idea. Haggling, it's called. Mm, a good start. You will learn quickly, I think. But so we get what, would you, what we want, and then we bring you what you want. Perhaps there's something in that place that you would like. Perhaps someone in that place you would like free. I would like to see the place burned down, if anything. Is, uh, well, I suppose that's not impossible. <laughs> she looks at you curiously. I see that is hardly my price, though. How about this? You get this useless slip of paper, free of charge. I will ask for nothing except a favor in the not-too-distant future. This is a deal. Elodor starts to speak, but Lutheran comes before him and then he just bites down. You can see sort of... I must Lost say, clenching a bit. T T Talafel turns his head back, the, c the cloak re revealing just enough to see you see one of his eyes. Just saying, you are not very good at haggling. You know that. This uh, favor seems to have a value depending on what happens, and I'm sure it'd be interesting no matter what it happens to be. The uh, editor looks over to the cat person in question. Uh, do not expect me to do anything that uh, I disagree with. 
I have certain principles I cannot easily go against. Do those principles contain not breaking a deal? If so, that satisfies me. No, I'm sure it does. She looks at each of you for a long moment as she looks you up and down and eventually produces a certain slip of paper that looks rather, well, ordinary from the outside, but is handled by her as if it was the most valuable thing she has ever touched. Well then, I will find you and you will do something for me. I look forward to meeting you again then as she throws the paper to the ground and scrambles up a wall. As, as it's thrown to the ground, I'll react by catching it with Mage Hand. And she disappears, unless you decide to chase her. No, I'm fine with that. There's no reason to chase her. I will Mage Hand it in, as she, into my position. Uh, as she gets away, Aladar will uh, sense uh, if she's evil. You concentrate on her quickly disappearing form as she rather gracefully scrambles up the wall and you do not think she's inherently evil. No. You want to grunt. 